drainage and grading, grading plans. Um, so again, the, the challenge here is multiple parties or entities working at a subdivision and the building sites, um, making the sort of continuity in the conversations challenging. And um, you come up with your drainage or grading plan at the beginning, but how can you ensure it, that it is adhered to as the subdivision development pr proceeds? And again, uh, a very similar suite of tools um, that I just mentioned um, with something like this as well. I mean, you've got powers in terms of managing the whole site. There are powers under the community charter, um, both with respect to buildings, as well as with respect to sewers and drainage, as well as with respect to uh, licensing and standards. So with all of those together, um, you have a pretty good set of tools for holding up building permits or occupancy, occupancy permits, as the case may be, um, for doing what you want to. Um, in terms of um, powers around drainage and grading, um, as I said, Section 69 of the Community Charter is specific uh, powers over drainage and sewers. Uh, runoff control is Section 907 of the Local Government Act, and landscaping is under Section 909. So all of these things uh, together give you a suite of tools for addressing what you need as far as um, the powers to set bylaws up where you can put in place uh, your, your standards and requirements and then work with those things uh, to do inspections along the way or set reporting uh, reporting standards and that kind of thing. Anyone want to talk about that? Experiences with that or challenges with that? These are proactive measures. So mm -hmm. Can we just skip a little bit and talk about some of the reactive measures where all the best plans of mice and men went Adrift. Mm -hmm. Now we want to get things back to where they should be. Right. <laughs> and I think in particular as it applies to surface so we've got a number of things that we can actually just pull a few and stuff. Right. Okay. Um, <coughs> well, I, I've mentioned this power before. Um, if if things uh, have not been uh, dealt with the way they're supposed to be dealt with, then the power to go in and rectify. Um, or to order that it be rectified in your stop work power. There's different ways of approaching it. Um, yeah. Um, so, mm. Oh, I'm sorry. So just a, a quick question before we maybe we get into the reactive. Just one more thing on the mm -hmm. proactive end of things. Yes. I'm, I, I, I'm sitting here and I, rec I completely recognize the link between the municipal municipality and the, and the developer. And I think those links as the developer is the applicant, those are, are quite solid so that, and you guys are working through the process by which to control the developer and how he develops. Yeah. But I don't hear any, any speak of the link between the municipality and the contractor uh, to the extent that within the Comox Valley here, there's probably maybe three or four contractors that do 90% of the work. Mm -hmm. And given that uh, locally the market has expanded to the extent that we're now getting developers from Calgary or Edmonton or, or wherever that maybe don't have the experience uh, of the local uh, bylaws. And as a consultant, you're bringing them up to speed and whatnot, but to have a link between the municipality and the, and the contractor and have an understanding of, of where protocols are mm -hmm. to, that, to that extent. And as, for example, the city of Courtney is developing this erosion and sediment control bylaw, uh, I think an introduction or, or familiarity between the municipality and the contractors is probably as wise as mm -hmm. providing further uh, enforcement on the developer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I that? Sure. So I think what we're talking about here is the link between what the city wants to see, or BC wants to see for that matter, if we can get act together completely across the province, and what actually happens on the ground. But locally, what we're going to do once we get our internal problems resolved, get better to managing development, we want to sit down with the contractors, the builders, etc., in group meetings, 
then we want to lay out so that we're going forward as a package, that we have ownership of what we're going with, in order that this is what we want to see happening, help us to make sure it happens, then let's come up with a format so that when a developer comes in, or a builder, or a contractor, and they say, I want to develop in Courtney, I want to build in Courtney, here's the package you take away. And before you get your building permit, we're going to go through this pile of paper with you, we're going to need to sign off on everything you've seen so that you don't say, oh, I didn't know about erosion control, mm -hmm. oh, I didn't know about this. You want to spend some time getting to that next step, which is, this is what we've planned, what we've set up through subdivision, the next step is what you're going to build, regardless of what it is, we want to be part of that scenario so we end up with the correct end product in the process to get there. We're not there yet, we're working on that, that's got to come. So I, I hear what you're saying, the communication link with the developer contractor isn't there yet, but it will be soon. Yeah, mm -hmm. only, only to the extent that if there was some notice of project that could be provided by the consultant or the developer to the city of Courtney to say, okay, it's Edget that's doing my project, they have somehow yeah. pre-qualified or signed yeah. something with the city to say, okay, they're aware of the city mm -hmm. of Courtney erosion cons control sediment bylaw, they are going to abide by it and, yeah. and go from there. Well, the next part of that is once we've done that, then we don't need to spend these enormous amount of staff time chasing contractors, developers, and builders. We, we've set the package up front, we say comply with this, this is the prescription, or there's a consequence for not following the prescription. Yeah, no, I agree with uh, your ideas there as far as working with the contractors as well. Um, Kim, I'm concerned about time and I'm just wanting to check in on that because as you know, I've got several more slides. We've had an opportunity to talk about things in as much depth as we were hoping for, which meant that we knew that some slides might have to be sacrificed. Right. Um, Do the soil depth okay. and then skip to the commentary. Okay. 